Beyond Minds is an artificial intelligence research company focused on creating immense value through AI research, making it more available, useful, and safe for the world. This innovative startup helps enterprises cope with their core problems, and here to tell us more about it is Or Kramer, co-founder of Beyond Minds. Welcome. Hi, thanks. So let's jump right in. What exactly does Beyond Minds do? So Beyond Minds is an AI research group. Uh, we are focused on two things. One is to empower organizations with uh, incorporating deep learning practices into their current products or services, mm -hmm. um, and basically acting as a problem solver in AI or the expert in the room in AI for those organizations. And the second thing that we do is actually work with some of those organizations as design partners to create products uh, that are uh, generalized, not to the particular problem of the organization, and can be replicated uh, across different uh, sectors or companies. So basically kind of like an incubator slash problem solver in AI. Mm -hmm. Now, before we talk about your start startup specifically, I want to talk about the field of artificial intelligence, right? It's a massive field. What can you tell us about it? So it's, it feels like AI is a huge buzzword right now, and uh, everything is AI. And actually, it's true. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, it's someone at some point uh, in the last five years, there's been s s incredible academic uh, revelations uh, mm -hmm. and advancements that are now allowing anyone that has data to do so much more with it than what used to be like a couple of years ago. And it really f affects all industries together. So like 75% of like CEOs now believe they want to incorporate AI. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily they know how, that's where we come to play. Uh, but in general, it really has the, the power to automate and make uh, processes much more efficient. So it seems like everybody wants to get in on the AI business, but what are the challenges that you're seeing in this field? So I think that in this particular industry, still the, the academia is the, uh, I guess, the point where uh, the most research is being done. Also, like some private sector companies like Google and Facebook have huge AI research mm -hmm. going on, but most companies currently don't have the capability to have this type of research uh, in-house. Um, and it's still a very difficult thing to do. Like the math is, is great, but it's still not very easily applicable. And there are new stuff coming from the academia every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so every week there's a new uh, uh, like state of the art uh, uh, article that is being published and it's changing completely how we do things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess the connection between the research side of it to the practice side of it or the application side of it is still uh, challenging uh, mm -hmm. to many organizations. And so how do you help these organizations bridge the gap? So we basically act as the expert in the room for everything deep learning or everything AI in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means that we, across different use cases, mostly computer vision, uh, natural language processing, um, signal processing, and uh, reinforcement learning, uh, and speech, it's basically kind of like the fields. And I just talked about so many mm -hmm. different elements. And it really is every one of them is like its own world. And we kind of provide this multidisciplinary approach where we have a bunch of experts that can really break through uh, those particular instances that are really hard to solve. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we are working with companies on a variety of products that they have on across the organizations to really implement where deep learning can be implemented. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the innovations that you're seeing in terms of, of deep learning and artificial intelligence? So in general, um, the field of uh, natural language processing is really, really evolving in the last two years. Uh, it really allows now to create much more, um, uh, I guess that in general, like what you're trying to do with AI is make better decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of decision support system or decision making systems are now really much available in much higher accuracy than even than it was like a year ago because there's so much advancements going on right now mm -hmm. in terms of the research. Uh, so really anything that can be um, allowing the employees to go and do something else that they're probably uh, more efficient in. Mm -hmm. Any type of procedure that is currently done uh, either not accurate or very manual intensive uh, could be resolved with the deep learning much better than it was it, what it used to be before two years ago even. Mm -hmm. Now, what stage are you in now? I'm actually curious, when was the company, your startup established? Yeah, so we're a fairly new operation. Uh, yeah. We started last year, uh, 2018. Uh, we're currently a team of 20. Uh, uh, scientists or uh, research scientists and specifically in algorithms mm -hmm. uh, and we are um, growing now internationally we're opening our office in London um, so we, we've done fairly well in, in, in one year uh, we're bootstrapped uh, which is great um, and uh, we're working with some really interesting clients can you expand on that a little yeah bit? so uh, we're working with Microsoft uh, obviously I can't detail anything of the of the specific mm -hmm. that we do with them but Microsoft KPMG uh, KLA, uh, Elbit, Rafael uh, from the um, from the cyber sector, 
um, and other companies, small and large. Uh, I think our main expertise is to work with really highly technical teams on the other side and really uh, guide them through uh, incorporating more of those uh, features into their products uh, as they go. And so they also get to keep a lot of the know-how in the organization uh, while they do it. Mm -hmm. So really big names that you're working with here. Yeah. And so I'll ask just one final question, sort of a broad question, but what does the future of AI hold? I mean, how do you see this, uh, this industry progressing? So coming back to also the first point, we think that it really is going to change everything. Uh, it's really, we consider it as the fourth revolution. Uh, however, and a lot of times it's, it seems to be a little bit scary uh, because when, most time when you picture AI is that it's going to, or in, in general disruptions, that it's going to replace organ, or organizations. We're going to do everything by robots. And it's not necessarily the case. I think yeah. AI, the good thing about it is that it really empowers the organizations that have data. And it's pretty much every organization have data that is useful mm -hmm. um, to really improve the products, to really improve uh, what their offering is. Mm -hmm. And uh, not necessarily as scary as it is. There are products that are going to be automated. There are parts like the autonomous cars industry that is mm -hmm. going to be uh, completely disrupted, probably. Yeah. Um, but I think, in general, it would make uh, it will make the world better in, in the sense that we will do more of the things that we really need to have a human in the loop and less of what is currently very, very technical. Uh, Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you very much.